Oh and yeah. He stayed with him. Yeah, he's a really good shot, and Damn. he knows a lot about cars. What did he used to do? Sold cars. Oh. Yeah, uh. I used to. I used to buy cars from him in order to go uh, on business trips. Were they any good? No. No, shit no, but they were cheap. And uh, you didn't have to sign your name. Why did you keep buying the cars? I didn't need to keep the cars. Well, you I just need the police not to know I was driving the same car every time. <laughs> Missy says, so you intentionally bought lemons... Because you knew that you needed to change cars quickly anyway. Yeah, and they cost almost nothing, so I'd sell them to junkyards afterwards. Uh, when we were in the tunnels, he mentioned something about buying cars from junkyards. Full circle. Zane says, it's like life. Are you sure yep. you never bought the same car twice? Nope. No, you're not sure. Or no, you didn't. Both? Uh, <laughs> Zane gives Eugene a confused look. And this, I don't think I did, but I'm not sure. This is our killer, huh? Like I said, I don't think I could do it if I was trying. You, you make a very compelling argument, Grace. <sighs> but... Honestly, it doesn't matter if I did it or not. E even if it was some shit controlling me, that still makes me dangerous. Gotta stay in these chains. At least when you're asleep. Exactly. Um, and uh, hopefully that's not for a long, long, long time again. Missy uh, gives uh, Eugene a studied expression. Like with the sleep in there. You know, Eugene, it might be for the best for you to... She, she pauses. I might be able to do something. We could try to put you into a dreamless state of sleep. Are you talking about killing me or putting me in a coma? You don't have to be in a coma not to dream. Sorry, to not dream. Yeah. Missy says, I don't want to kill you, but may you do need that sleep in order to function. I can, I can function for a while without sleeping. But if you weren't sleeping before, and when you finally passed out is when you killed <laughs> that poor bastard, I think controlling your sleep might be a little more helpful. His name is Crash. Not that poor bastard. Missy says, another possibility is if... I just thought of this. Maybe, maybe this whatever works based on distance if we move you far enough away and you sleep maybe this desiccation or whatever she pauses maybe he can't get to you or maybe I've actually gone fucking insane I don't know be useful enough experiment uh, and where would I stay? Where's there a safe place within that distance from here? Missy shrugs. I don't know. That's probably a question. I'll mention that to Lance before he comes up here for the night. Lance, Lance. He's the, uh, the real pale guy, right? Yeah. Zane says, yeah, pale, suave. He's Right out of a fucking runway. Runway? He's like a vampire or something. Ah, ah, one of those type. He's not a vampire. He, he, Zane looks at Missy. Is he? Missy shakes her head. We're albino. Oh. I don't know what the word is. Can't go out in the sun. I mean, 
I can't go out in the sun. I mean, Zane, I mean, he might be. I and mean, there are zombies. Look, like catches on fire or something. Missy, Missy, uh, says and see he, in the dark. He has zero derma pigmento sum. Zane says, right, XP. Yeah, he's a vampy. But we out. Wait, what? He's not a vampire, is he? <laughs> Zane looks at Missy again. Missy's still shaking her head. Well, then how come he can see in the dark? He can't. He said he can. Well, if he probably says many things. I don't know. I'm yeah. Give him a night watch. I don't know. Does maybe... Zane like, looks over at Missy. Does like XP to Missy Shrugs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a vet. I don't do that. <laughs> what, never worked with any vampire animals? And they got bats like that, right? Not to my knowledge. Hey, I'm just saying. You've got vampires and magic dead people who can write on your eyes, control an army of other dead people with psychic powers. Saying, shut up. I'm just saying. It's all magic. Ma magic isn't real? You go and see what shit. you've seen in the past couple months and say that magic isn't fucking real? The, really? AA says the government did it. So maybe the government knows how to do magic. Mm -hmm. I like, this, I like where this is going. Eugene, didn't you say something about some sort of Nazi? Didn't they, like, work with the cult shit back in the war? I don't think he was a Nazi. He just spoke Nazi. You never know, man. That's... That's a good point. I mean... I mean, this shit wasn't supposed to happen. I mean, who's to say? Yeah. Shut up, Zane. Oh, God. I don't want to be here. I don't think yeah, many you do. do you don't want to be somewhere else. Zane, like, pauses it and gives that genuine consideration whether he wants to be somewhere else. Yeah. And where are you going to go? And his eyes slowly widen. Yeah. Oh, Fucked up, fuck. right? This is still the best place to be. Zane right? looks over at Missy. Missy slowly nods. <laughs> Fuck! Like that's, that's the fucked up part. He puts his hands up to his face. Oh, cool, cool. I gave up a uh, perfectly good lows to get here. Yeah, no, no. Look. You see these chains? I'm on the roof like this. This is still the best place for me to be. Chains, bring the reality check. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Surprise, uh, motherfucker! Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh. On the first day of Christmas, payday came to me. A broke day, piece of shit, drill. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> uh, yes, tr yeah. trusty Tony's productive sounds of engineering and machinery can be heard on the floor below. I think I better get down there before something explodes. Yeah, fair enough. Wait, what? Uh, what? Oh, Me don't here. worry. Don't... It's not going to knock down the building. Uh, uh... We don't have a demolitionist anymore. Too late. Oh. Going down. You be okay up here. Explosion noises. You know, with murderer and the probably vampire on base. <laughs> you be okay up here with murder. <laughs> You guys do know that Zane is getting <laughs> more and more psychologically worse because of you guys. Non-stop trauma. I think <laughs> it's the I beginning think, of trauma hour. I honestly Zuh. think the nicest person who has the person who has been the nicest to Zane has been Missy and Tony, because Tony <laughs> hasn't said a damn word to Zane. <laughs> <laughs> And Missy's fucking stuck up there with the room. Tony yes. shows his love with neglect. That's right. <laughs> hey. Just because just because he doesn't say anything doesn't mean he doesn't care. In fact, that's 
That's what shows that he cares. Yeah. He understands that he shouldn't inflict himself on others. Mm-hmm. As for uh, Trusty Tony's progress, it's coming Very along well. Uh, fairly well. well. As you're moving on to that. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, you know, slow going, but, uh, Trusty Tony has an idea of what he's doing. You know, he knows the wiring. He knows how car batteries work. You just put this... Go ahead. The real question is, why is one of the car batteries just resting on top of Willy? I need a stable platform. (laughs) Trusty Tony, like, brought, like, Willy out of the claws and has, like, him resting in the room. (laughs) He's but brown. Desk. Yeah, Willie's still stone cold asleep. He is, by the way. We don't have desks. We don't have beds. We've been sleeping on like clothes that we brought back. I don't know. I saw one of the floors. It was just a maze of desks. It's true. Floor three, which is Eugene's floor, is just a complete maze of like desks and like other sort of furniture. Curiously arranged with a maze so that he can be safe in the middle. It also smelled like pot. Like a lot of pot. Hmm. What else is new? Uh, well, uh, dealing with, what, sentient zombies now? That, that's kind of new for me. I mean... Mm-hmm. I mean... Considering the shit I've been through, sentient zombies were the natural progression. Well, I mean, looking at all of your scars, I think you're more scar than man, aren't you? Hey, you've probably been through a lot, right? I've earned, I've earned some of these. The other ones were self-inflicted. Uh, other not ones. Like, Define other like ones. Uh, it's it's hard to differentiate. Okay seen a lot of lacerations all over your skull, man. Let's, let me just say, me and Glass don't get along well. As in, you ram head first into Glass, or we're talking about, like, unfortunate accidents? Yes. Okay. Are you sure someone as accident-prone as you needs to be working with car batteries? Especially that brand. Oh, come on. It's a Duralast battery. These things last forever. Uh, apparently they also can catch on fire. Anything can catch on fire if you put enough if you put enough fuel on it. Also, also the, also the, inside, also the acid inside these things is sometimes flammable. But hey, you just don't want to pierce the battery. Then what are you doing with that screwdriver? Uh, piercing the case. Got it. You know, Listen. if you, uh... Listen. Listen here. Trust me, this is going to work. And if it doesn't, I'll be the one who who has the unfortunate side effect of getting exploded. But it's just a car battery. How much damage can it do? I don't know. I mean, how much damage can a small fall in a car do? I wouldn't know. I've only been in one. <laughs> Uh. Now just. Now, now. Uh, go ahead. If you end up needing uh, more batteries to do whatever you're doing to them, there is always that Lowe's you found me in. I was intending to go there later today after I got this working. Working, working. Okay. As soon as you wreck that battery, I'll be around to go with you to the Lowe's. When this thing works, you're going to be disappointed. Disappointed that we have a working battery pump, or just surprised that you haven't caught on fire? Now that I think about it, catching on fire is something that has never happened to me. There's always a first time. I'd rather not have that happen to me. Uh, anyway, I'll call you when this thing's when we're when I'm done here. You'll uh, either you'll either know from it exploding or catching on fire, or it, you'll know. Yeah. Oh, um, I was on the roof just recently. A uh, question for you. Mm. Where the hell is the big guy? Like, you know, the really big guy. Who looks like he could punch his way through a wall. Tr- Jax. Tr- trusty Tony has no idea, like, right immediately where Jax is. That's mm. something Trusty Tony pays attention to. I, mean, I really don't want to ask uh, the sleeping guys 
you know, Sergeant Trauma up there, or uh, you know, the the angry Mummy Man. Uh, find the guy with the sunglasses. Ace, he might know. Okay. Um, the guy's name is Jax. Jax, Jax. Okay. Yes. If you can't find Ace, the only other person that might know would be Fletch, but I think he's kind of indisposed. You know what was getting hit by a grenade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting hit by a grenade doesn't really help much in the way of. And beyond that, the only other person that might know would be Riggs, which I could understand you not wanting to talk to. Look, look. I, I was trying to watch what he was doing. He pulled a gun. You know. The... He's very protective of his space. Yeah, yeah. Protective of his space. The whole fucking floor. Hmm. You uh. You watch where you're putting that metal on that battery. I'll, I'm gonna get off the floor before it explodes. All right. And not a and not a single word of worry for Willie. Wow. Willie is asleep, and you know why would I worry about Willie? He's fine. Look at him. He's weathered worse than an exploding car battery. Just gonna go through the floors, asking people, trying to avoid uh, rigs. Sure. Uh, the fourth floor uh, would be where you would encounter someone other than Riggs. Uh, Pink is uh, working on electronics on the same floor alongside him, though she's pretty distracted and lost in her work. Hey, uh, sorry to bother you, but I'm I'm looking for a tall guy. It begins with a J. Jax. Pink looks uh, over at Riggs. Riggs says, uh, and like, waves a hand dismissively. Pink says, from what I remember from the morning meeting, he's in the basement. He's watching over to make sure that no other soldiers or, uh, what was the exact term that he used? Uh, something about re discorporated demon body or whatever. Ah, uh, uh, floating corpse thing. Got it. Yeah. Gonna go down, look at the maze of desks, and eventually go to the basement. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a, a maze of desks. Uh, down there in the basement, uh, you can actually see uh, Jax having like ported a large like chair, like one of those chairs that are made for big people. And God, is he is he a mammoth? You know, seven feet tall, especially clad in his armor with the M4 dangling from a hand like a child's toy. A uh, lit cigarette dangling from his mouth, and a bottle of uh, whiskey in the other hand as well. Just so, sitting there, basically like in the hallway between the two staircases, looking left and right. The uh, This section is actually fairly well lit. Uh, this seems like uh, at least the lighting around this area has been fixed to provide at least a convenient light source for this corridor. Although further on, as you look towards the left and right, and peer around the corners to look at the other intersections, it is quite dark. Yo, uh, big guy, you need a hand down here? I mean, I don't much of much else to do until, uh, until God, scar tissue guy, uh, Tony. Tony decides he needs to go to the Lowe's. Jackson shrugs and says, "By all means, if you'd like to sit down here, although." I imagine it not being the most welcoming thing. That's better than doing nothing or, you know, waiting for whatever Tony's doing to blow up in his face. This, this is nothing but tedium, and only those highly trained like myself can handle such a mighty foe as tedium. Mm, mm. You and uh, your compatriot, Whiskey. Jack says, yes, it's helped me through much tedium in my life. <sighs> I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and grab my crossbow. Might want to grab a chair as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw some back on the third floor with all of the desks, I assume. Oh, yes. One of Eugene's shakes his head. Whatever. Going to go ahead and bring those down there and just take a seat next to him watch mm-hmm. whatever direction he's not watching. Mm-hmm. He hasn't moved at all during that time. Seems uh, about as relaxed as you imagine someone clad in full body armor could be. Although, to his credit, it doesn't seem as if it really slows him down or even fatigues him at all. 
Like, uh, his fingers, whenever he moves them, like for his cigarette, or for the bottle of whiskey, or to uh, lift and inspect the weapon, uh, it doesn't seem as if his uh, ma- uh, maneuverability is impaired. I see. Or that it tires him. It's quite interesting about that. So, uh, anything on base that I could actually help out with, other than just, you know, I guess plunking things with arrows? I says, I don't know. What did you used to do before you came here? Uh, bit of, uh, breaking and entering, that type of deal. Breaking and entering that type of deal. Yeah, yeah, you know. Skullduggery, thievery. General. Skullduggery? Skullduggery, yes. That was a good thing to come back on. General, you know, malcontent, such work. Right. Like Fletch, then? Uh, probably not the same as him, but similar idea, yeah. Hmm. All right. Jax looks down. I don't recall a crossbow being a typical tool of a thieves' arsenal. Ah, uh, this is, uh, from my dad. Ah. Uh, you like to go hunting. Something you learned as a matter of course? Or of necessity? Both. Um, I learned how to use it growing up, but uh, I only really got good with it lately. Right. As for what you can do... You know carpentry? Fortunately, no. And uh, the only other thing I'm really good at... Uh, here's electronics, that type of stuff. You've already got a man, and uh, I assume Hank was it also working on it? Yes, yes, those two were quite <laughs> well together. It's almost as if she can diffuse every single little annoyance Riggs brings up, and I have been with him for years. That's pretty impressive, considering what sets that guy off. Quite a bit, but... He has a good core once you get past all of the, uh... Everything? Riggsiness. I see, I see. So, crossbow, electronics, breaking and entering. Yeah, yeah. Didn't really ever get caught. So there's that. Good. Then, uh, there is something that you can do in addition to keeping your eyes open and your ears alert, and that would be going out with Tony. Because of what has transpired of late, and his uh, teeth clench. I need uh, a sign. Sure. Jack breaks into a story about the old days. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, trusty Tony is on work. You back yet, Aaron? Yep. Thought so. What'd you get to eat? Uh, chicken, shallots, potatoes. Oh, okay. Good food. All right. Mm. Okay, so back on the roof then, Zane. Zane will just uncharacteristically follow. So, Missy, you think that maybe we can actually save, uh, Eugene, uh, pot, Eugene, what do you call it? What, what, which name do you prefer? Hmm. Aaron. Yes? That, that, that was directed at you. Oh, sorry, I missed that. It's true. Uh, Zane is beginning to talk to Missy about something, and then he breaks off mid-sentence and goes to Eugene, basically, like, which name do you prefer? Because he hesitates over Potman and Eugene. Eugene. I'm back. Okay. My, uh, uh, my grandma always yelled at me whenever I'd let people call me Potman. Oh. Well... Why do all of your friends call you pot man? Because they're assholes. Missy says, you didn't get out much, do you, Zane? What do you mean? Well, you see, when people like each other, they sometimes create nicknames based on their prior experiences together. You must not have had very many of those. Um... 
That's why your nickname is Zane, honey. You know, unoriginal. Fits in with your last name. Oh. oh. Yeah. I got hey. the nickname because I was the town dealer. Hey, you're saying that I didn't have any friends. Missy nods. Yes, I am. That's cold. Oh. But right, isn't it, Zane? Oh. Man, you're really pushing that button. Missy says someone's got to make him more useful. Why do you think I'm up here? Yeah, fair enough. Oh. Look, I had friends. I'm sure you did, Zane. Just, we didn't insult each other by nicknames like none of my friends. I wouldn't have allowed them to call me Pop Man if I didn't want it. I'd stick up for myself. Fight back. Whoa, hey, I'm not the one criticizing you, Zane. Relax. Okay, okay. Back to the basement, Jax will say, Well, what we could end up using is more materials. I told Tony about an idea that could work to seal off areas of this basement if we're going to save the horticulture labs at all, which you have not yet seen in their entirety. There are going to be, well, they're why we came here initially, as a source of food. As, as such, given the lack of man power and the strains of the situation i'm unable to make a run myself for what is needed however trusty tony <laughs> trusty could use the assistance particularly with eugene in his situation ah uh, yes Yeah, I can, I can definitely do that. I mean, we've still got a whole Lowe's to clear out, and beyond that, it shouldn't be too hard to find too much out there. Jack's, uh, Jack's eyes narrow with Eugene and his situation. Gonna just, uh, not add anything to that. Eugene, uh, Jax tosses the bottle of whiskey down the hallway. I really hope that was empty whiskey. Oh god, no. Smashes and a little bit of whiskey. Not much left in the bottle. Just spreads out in a puddle over the floor. I'm gonna get a broom. I don't want to step on glass. Well, Jax Use isn't gonna stop you from grabbing a broom. <laughs> Use opportunity to find broom and get the glass out of a place where people would be walking. Sure. You can do that. <laughs> find out we need to get a broom so we go to Lowe's to get the broom <laughs> you can probably find a broom like substance <laughs> All right, like a yes Tell a broom like substance Tony I'm gonna have to borrow Willie <laughs> I'm sorry I'm using him I'm using him to test for acidic compounds <laughs> that's what she said What the fuck? <laughs> look, look, Chris said I need to borrow Willy. Holy shit. How else was I supposed shit. to take that? <laughs> Maybe some different way. Uh, Roll them around glass shards, use them to pick it up. Alright. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. That is that I hate them. Is that's what she said jokes to? But oh, but you're losing your shit now. I know. <laughs> it came to mind. <laughs> it just fucking just popped right in. <laughs> now I'm gonna be making that's what she said jokes for all the things I say, <laughs> including that. Uh, I'm just gonna start phrasing my dialogue so that I could easily slide right in there. <sighs> oh God damn it! No. You're giving me a horrible idea. Okay. Well, 
If there are no other NPC interactions that any of you would like to do, uh, uh, some time will pass into afternoon. We'll say a six hours, so it'll be minus six endurance for, uh, for Popman, and trusty Tony will end up finishing his power converting source. Uh, it's proprietary technology. You won't understand. Yeah. It, <laughs> it looks like it functions. That's all that matters to me. Hmm? All right. I'm going to set the uh, power converting contraption off to the side near the water pump contraption. Sure. And I'm going to go get uh, Ace and Grace because both of them seemed like they wanted to go. Or... I know Ace said he wanted to go. I don't know if Grace has indicated as much. Sure. Ace is actually outside uh, looking at the uh, the helicopters. 